Let's now go over the four must-know editing techniques plus one bonus advanced one at the very end. The first one we're going to go over is speed slash duration. To access this, right click on your clip and go to speed and duration. The shortcut for this is command R. You will notice the speed value right here says 100%. You can increase this number all the way up to 10,000%. Speeding up drone footage is a great asset I use with a lot of my drone footage because flying at high altitudes can make every movement feel very slow. So, by speeding up my drone footage, I can make every long shot feel very fast and very smooth. The altitude you're flying at will really determine how fast you want to speed up your footage. If you're flying low to the ground, you'll be able to see fast movements with your drone anyways, so you don't need to speed it up as much. But if you're flying at a high altitude and you can't notice much movement, you'll want to speed up your footage to quickly cover more ground. Technique two is speed ramping. The speed ramp is similar to the basic tool of speeding up your footage, but instead it gives you a lot more flexibility between the starting and ending speed of your clip. First, double click to adjust the height of the track. You can also drag this up and down if you want a specific height. Now right click on this effects square right here, go to time remapping and click speed. Now command click when you see this plus arrow right here and drag this keyframe to the right. From here, you can drag this section up and you will notice a ramp is developing and there's a percentage on the right right there. That percentage on the right is the end speed that your clip will be playing at. The longer the ramp, the longer it will take to go from slow to fast. The lower section on the left is moving slower and the faster section all the way on the right is moving faster. You can flip this as well and make the keyframe on the left faster and the right of the ramp slower if you'd like. With speed ramping, you have total control of how fast or slow you want the ramp to move. A tip here, make sure you have your clip open to a large height so that you can easily view the ramps you're creating. Look at the difference with speed ramping your footage and doing a hard cut speed change. Get in the habit of using speed ramping whenever you have to adjust the speed of your clip without using a hard cut as you have much more flexibility this way. The third technique we're gonna go over is reversing footage. To access the reverse effect, right click on your clip and go to speed duration. From here, check this box reverse speed, press okay. The shortcut for that is command R. You will notice the entire clip you've selected will now reverse speed. The end of the clip is now the beginning, and the beginning is now the end. This is an awesome way to easily change the perspective of your footage, especially if you have a fast moving shot going forward that you reverse, so now it looks like you're moving backwards fast now. I use this technique a lot because of the effects you can create with it. Flying backwards would be otherwise dangerous even when you have line of sight on your drone, so being able to reverse your footage after the fact is extremely useful. The reverse effect is great when there's a lot of movement in your shot as it will almost always look great when reversed. Take advantage of reversing your footage and experiment with what looks best. The fourth technique we're gonna go over is scale and position keyframing. Adjusting the scale and position of your footage is a great way to add depth. Depth creates a feeling of being inside the shot itself which is very enticing for the viewer. To access this, click on your clip and go to the motion tab in the top left. Let's adjust the scale first. To do so, click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Make sure your keyframe is all the way to the left and scrub your mouse down the timeline to the right a little. Now drag the scale to the right and you will see a keyframe appear here now. What this means is from the left keyframe all the way to the right keyframe, the scale values you set will play. So the scale value on the left keyframe is 50 and the scale value on the right keyframe is 70. Play through this section of your clip and you will see the zoom happening. You want to seamlessly zoom in and out of your shot the entire time. A tip here is to never adjust your scale past 100. Anything above 100 will decrease clarity in your clip. Let's look at adjusting your position now. The process is exactly the same as it was for scale. Create a keyframe at the far left of your clip and scrub to the far right and create another keyframe. The values here are the X and Y position, so adjust these accordingly without having any black bars showing in your footage. When it comes to adjusting scale and position, I always combine both to create the best effect. Create keyframes for both, push your scale in or out, and move your X and Y positioning either left, right, up, or down. A 
quick tip here, make sure your right keyframe is all the way at the end of your clip or else it will stop zooming right before the end of the clip, which will give a jarring effect on your eye. The advanced bonus section I've included is called nesting. Nesting is necessary when you want to adjust the scale and position or reverse your footage while also speed ramping. To do so, first adjust your scale and position to what you feel is best. Extend your clip out a few seconds longer than you need so you have extra room to work with when you're speeding up your footage. Now nest your sequence by right clicking and finding nest. Now we're going to speed ramp our clip. This process remains the same where you're going to create the perfect speed ramp to fit your needs. As you can see, we have successfully combined both a scale and position transformation with a speed ramp. The same process goes for reversing your footage and adding a speed ramp. First reverse your footage, now nest your clip. Repeat the speed ramp process to fit your needs. Practice the process of nesting your footage and notice a major increase in the quality of your shots. We'll see you in the next chapter.